Hi, I'm Sadie Hoagland with the Utah Book Fest, and I'm here with Juan Morales, who is going to be with the Book Fest in October. And I have a few questions for Juan, and he's graciously uh, agreed to answer them. Um, hi, Juan. <laughs> hi, thanks for having me, Sadie. Sure. How did you um, How did you come to poetry? Did you always want to write? Um, so, I I in in my in a past life in high school in college I was in like a I was in a silly ska band and so I started kind of writing lyrics and goofing around with 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 words then but you know and and that kind of helped me introduce me to cliches rhythm and kind of got my hours and efforts into it and then from and then from there uh, when I went to when I went to when I you know as a first generation university student I took my first like creative writing workshop and kind of just gravitated towards poetry and fortunately I had some really good mentors that introduced me to to different writers of color and and other writers that kind of meshed with the storytelling that I, I I've discovered is it really connects to me as a writer and even before then uh looking back I was always journaling 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 so I think all these all these kind of experiences converged to 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 inspire me to write poetry Thanks for reminding me about Ska. I completely forgot about Ska. Um, I read your poem, uh, Puerto Rico Goes Dark in the New York Times about Hurricane Maria and its devastating effects on Puerto Rico. Um, but it's also a poem about where Puerto Rico sits in relation to mainstream US continental. Um, and I just was, it was such an emotional poem to read. And I wondered about, um, how difficult it was to write for you um, emotionally? Did you have to wait a little bit? Uh, were you able to write it right in the events? Did it come naturally to process that that kind of emotion and anxiety of worrying about your relatives? When I wrote when I wrote Puerto Rico Goes Dark, um, it was a slow process, you know. And and also like when I when I, I think part of the process of of getting it published, you know, there was like it took a long time for it to find its home and and, I, and i'm eternally grateful that it found readership with poetry magazine that's that's yeah I, i'm still speechless about that um with, with the writing of the poem itself this was when my father was still alive and i i i i, I would, and i also have a really good be, between my father and a really good friend of mine in, in here in pueblo colorado who had you know who has like a more immediate connection to his relatives still in puerto rico um, I kind of was worrying and trying and, and internalizing a lot of the a lot of the turmoil that they were kind of going through, and but then also I was kind of prioritizing their 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 worry over mine uh, because I think another aspect of the poem and writing about it is is this kind of idea of diaspora because mm -hmm. my 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 father has passed away and he kind of feels like the the lifeline to Puerto Rico and and of course I have a lot of family there but we're still trying to navigate how we stay in touch and how we stay connected without without this important family member in our lives so I think through the revision process you know um the el the elegiac aspects of my father that are like in adjacent poems are kind of part of that too Mm -hmm. um, but, but otherwise, you know, but, but I think also the last thing I'll say about it is like the, another part of it is the tension of being in a landlocked state far, state far away from Puerto Rico, the, the, the utter helplessness of what my family's going through is, is, and, and trying to, trying to remind everyone of the limbo and the continued limbo and, and struggles that, that, that Puerto Rico struggles through. Mm -hmm. and and the resilience and persistence of of everyone there yeah and the and i loved the image of the darkness not just from the dark and the power outages but like darkness as isolation and not being able to reach people and um not being able to find out what's actually happening on the ground that was really powerful um thank you but i noticed you're a professor you also are an editor so I have to ask um, for our listeners and folks that are interested in coming to your event that are interested in being writers themselves and poets themselves, what kind of advice do you do you give young writers or uh, beginning writers of any age? That's yeah. Well, it's always a great question to 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 answer. Um, my my advice is to, and and I'm you know I'm currently teaching a poetry a poetry workshop. 
here at, CSU, at Colorado State University Pueblo, and it's and it's kind of like the first poetry workshop I'm teaching in person since uh, the pandemic, uh, the in in its current form. And and one of the things that I'm noticing is you know it reminds us that a lot of people are intimidated by poetry, you know, because of the misconceptions and the assumptions that kind of come with the genre. I, my advice is to to put aside those to put aside those misconceptions and and assumptions and remember that poetry is is for the people. It's for everyone. And if you're not finding the poets that connect to your your experiences or your or your backgrounds, they're out there and just, you know, be persistent in finding them and also write when you can, because I think um, a lot of people are too busy to have the the ritualistic aspects. If and when we can have those ritualistic routines where we have the specific desk in the specific spot do it but when you can't write when you can even if it's five minutes even if it's one line one line a day and things like that and 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 i think it'll kind of it, it'll take the form that it needs to be and and find the people find the readers that that are meant to do it um but it's always it's always an honor to teach it's always an honor to be an editor to kind of give back with that concept that we call literary citizenship and 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 i you know hopefully like when, when i'm in when i'm in uh when I'm in Ogden, I have the opportunity to kind of nerd out with people a little bit more. Yeah, that right when you can really resonates with me too. It's like, we all want that sort of carved out time, but sometimes it just doesn't exist. So thank you so much. Would you, uh, would you finish by reading us a poem? Um, I'd be delighted. And so the poem I've selected is, is from my third collection of poems, The Handyman's Guide to End Times. It's a collection of, uh, zombie love home improvement poetry and uh since i'm going since i'm going towards the to the salt flats i'll, I'll read a poem with with uh with salt in it it's called explaining seafood to my future grandkids after the extinction it's a little light i will describe like a murder how we used to rip open juicy bodies and clacking claws of lobsters and crabs to feast on warm meat inside. I will smack my lips describing how we seared the tiny ones with red tails called shrimp and butter, garlic and batter. I will contaminate the moment by describing cocktail and tartar sauce as red or whites. I will explain how the ocean snake-like wonders called eels were bendable monsters made only of arms and fish who swam in nimble clouds up and then down to the depths where deep sea creatures created their own lights in a time when the sea was not stung full of jellyfish and swirling garbage. And we swam with the taste of salt pressed to our lips. Thank you. That's beautiful. I feel that Thank way you. about snow. <laughs> like how will <laughs> I explain skiing? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, we're so excited to have you at the Utah Duck Fest in October, and thank you so much again for joining me. Oh, it's 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 all the it's all the, it's just a real pleasure, Sadie. Thank you so much, and looking forward to being there.